Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, my god, Miguel Cotto versus Canelo Alvarez. I mean, yo, Miguel Cotto got a broke fucking nose three weeks before a fight. Now, I keep seeing everywhere in the articles and shit, black eye, black eye. The fucking black eye came from getting his fucking nose broke. It's twisted. It has the fucking line across it. I mean, I know a broke nose when I see one. That shit is broke. Um, you know, now, now, three weeks before a fight, uh, I might not be, you know, broken all that bad, but it looks pretty fucking bad. I mean, three weeks before a fight? Um, that's not good. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's not good. That, that's bad. That's very fucking bad. He's going to get jabbed, what, 10, 15 times in that fucker, and it's going to swell right back up. Break break again. Um, swell right back up. It's going to clog his breathing. Um, his eye might swell even. Um, that's troublesome. That's very troublesome. This fight was looking kind of 60-40 in favor of Canelo, but some people have it 60-40 in favor of Cotto. Um, you know, I was favoring Canelo, and I haven't made a video since, but I started leaning, like, towards Cotto, um, thinking, you know, he'll be able to give him enough movement, enough in and out, um, really work when Canelo isn't working, uh, I started giving him more of a chance and made it more of a 50-50 fight. Because, um, I, like I said, I was favoring Canelo, but slightly. And then it turned to like a 50-50 fight. But now, I'm back to favoring Canelo. Um, now, throughout history, fighters have entered the ring. Champions, fighters, whoever, fighters, period, have entered the ring with much worse much worse, and dominated guys, you know, they're, they're supposed to lose to, or 50-50 fights, whatever. So it's not a guarantee that it's going to cost them the fight or anything, but it is a guarantee that it's going to cause trouble for him in the fight. Now, can he fight through it? I don't know. Uh, imagine, you know, Cotto getting cracked in the face a few times, a couple hard jabs, nose nose goes again, uh, he can't breathe that well, maybe his eyes are a little watery, he starts to backpedal, now Canelo's chasing him, uh, kind of stalking him, and Canelo just, or Cotto just never stops backpedaling. We've seen it in fights before. Um, with Roach, will he be able to, you know, get Cotto to stop backpedaling and just say fuck it and throw down and fight? Or will Cotto try to and go out on your shield? Or will Cotto try to last and go to a decision if that scenario happens? Um, perfect example was like the Manny Pacquiao fight. It's the middle of the fight. And he just pretty much gave up. And for the first, what, four rounds I think it was, it was a damn good fight. I mean, you didn't know what was going. It was a damn good fight until that very first time he got dropped. And then it just kind of went downhill from there. Um, then the backpedaling. And we've seen him do it in other fights, too. Uh, obviously not with Roach, because he hasn't fought anyone that's really going to do, do anything. I mean, every fight he's had with Roach was a fucking guaranteed win. Um, you know... Uh, yeah, Martinez. People would like to bring that up. Dude, Martinez was shot too. Shit, they knew it. Oh, eh, eh, everybody knew it, man. If you were paying attention and really reading about it and things like that, I mean, um, I remember me and my buddy from Facebook when I wasn't even doing, I wasn't doing videos then, um, and he was going Martinez. He was like, he's gonna bust his face all up, bust it up. He's gonna move, move, jab, bang him, bang him, jab. Uh, you know. Crack him with the right, hit him with the left hook, and stick him with the jab, keep moving, and Cotto's eventually just going to get busted apart. And I was like, you know, 
I don't even care if Kodo's just a little bit. I knew, you know, Roach had a history of making fighters look better, but then they would kind of fall apart when they hit adversity. Um, he's also had fighters that he made look better, and they stayed better. So we don't really know where Kodo is at, but why have they been playing it so safe with, with Kodo? Like, Edwin Rodriguez, okay. They need a little tune-up, whatever. Then they go for the middleweight strap. Okay, you get it. It's like, okay, now you got two fights in. You're the champ. Your confidence is up. And then they go for Gil, and they drain him. You know, why Why isn't he fighting, you know... Uh, if you want to fight a smaller middleweight, pick a smaller middleweight. You know, fight Triple G. Um... I don't know, just just fight some Danny Jacobs, even though that fight probably couldn't happen. But yeah. so why pick a big dude who comes into the ring like 185? And you know that, so you drain the shit out of him. Um, I keep wondering why they've been playing it so safe with Kodo. There's something there. There's a reason for it. Um, <coughs> the belief must not be there. And yes, Roach is just as good a trainer as he is a matchmaker to make his fighters look phenomenal. Um, but that Gil win was pointless. Like that shit should just should have never even happened. Um, now, this fight is a real fight. Um, yeah, Canelo's not you know like a fucking fantastically um, well-rounded fighter or nothing like that. <clears throat> he has a lot of holes in his game. He has a lot of he has the stamina issues. Um, you know, there's a lot. I mean, he's he's a he's terrible footwork. He's slow. He's flat-footed. Um, his hands are fast. He got fast hand speed. He got good power. Got a decent chin. Um, you know, I, can he take a good Kodo left hook? I don't know. You know, that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, what, what wasn't it? <clears throat> you know. Uh, um, oh fuck, the other Kodo fucking nailed the shit out of uh, Canelo. So what What can Miguel do, you know? It's like, you, we'll find out. <laughs> and then, dude, <laughs> I, 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 Canelo is fucked. He's fucked, or Kodo is fucked. Kodo is fucked. I can't see a way for, you know, this nose to not severely affect him. How's he going to be in uh, exchanges, you know, biting down on his mouthpiece, um, you know, breathing, staying calm while throwing combos? He's probably not even going to be able to breathe after the third round, um, you know, unless he's backpedaling and gasping and sucking in air. But it's basically going to be like, and everyone tells you this from the jump uh, when you enter a boxing gym. When you're throwing your combos, don't hold your damn breath. It's the number one thing, uh, you know, people do when they come into the gym. They fucking hold their breath when they're throwing punches. Well, if your nose is broke and you can't breathe through it, and you're biting down on your mouthpiece, that that's kind of going to be the same thing. Uh, you know, that's not good. That's it's terrible. Um, oh, man, it's only three weeks. It's like, it's less, it's less than three weeks, man. It's like two weeks. Um, shit, I mean, it's... It's a little, like, two and a half weeks. Uh, I don't, there's, I mean, number one, there's no way the nose is healing in time, and they can't call the fight off. Um, they keep calling it a black eye. That's what I keep seeing everywhere. They're not saying that nose is broken, but the media day, you can't hide it. That motherfucker is busted, and it was Glenn Tapia who did it. Uh, Freddie Roach came out and said Glenn Tapia is the one who fucking broke, broke his nose. Um, Glenn Tapia fucked you up, and he said Glenn Tapia tries to kill him every time they're in the ring together to get him ready, you know, for Canelo, but, I mean, damn, Glenn Tapia? Glenn Tapia is, you know, a decent, uh, like, you know, C-minus fighter or whatever, I mean, you wouldn't think Cotto would be getting fucking tagged by him, uh, you know, you would think Cotto would be working more in and out, <clears throat> you know. Slipping under a shot, body shot, gloves up defense, because he's usually very uh, defensively responsible. You wouldn't think 
Glen Tapia would be able to, you know, land something. And yeah, it happens, man. It happens. It sucks that it happened this close to the fight. I think if it would have happened, you know, two months ago, um, right when camp started, but they wouldn't have been sparring it. Maybe right at the beginning of sparring, they might have postponed it. I don't know, man, but that's not just a black eye. <laughs> that is not just a black eye. Uh, I mean, it's fucking broke. You, like, you don't, your nose don't look like that if it ain't broke. It don't get the line. It ain't fucking crooked. It ain't all swollen unless it's broke. Um, if someone out there has, you know, medical experience and, and they've seen that before and the nose wasn't broke, please uh, comment and, you know, drop some information on how it might not be broke. Because, um, again, I'm not you know, a physician, I have no medical degree of any kind, even though I do work in the medical field, but that's not, uh, you know, I'm not really in that type of the medical field. I'm not going to get into that, it's my personal business, but um, from what I know, and I just, just for boxing, that, that's a no, that's a no, that's a fucking broken nose, man. How are you going to go into basically the biggest fight of your life? Yeah, Pacquiao and Mayweather were the biggest fights of his life, but this is now the biggest fight of his life. Uh, the, you know, this could, if he can beat Canelo, he can finally be like king of something, you know, because he was never able to be the king of any division he was in. Every division he was in, someone came along and fucked him up. You know, even though he was a great fighter, A-level fighter, um, the only guy I think he ever really avoided was Paul Williams. Um, but, you know, dude fought everybody. Uh, you know, never scared of a fight. Always brought it. Um, kind of, you know, like I said, the Pacquiao fight when he started that backpedaling shit. Um, we've seen him do it other times. I don't like that about him. Um, he better, if he's losing, he needs to go out on his shield. I mean, don't start backpedaling and try to survive and just go 12. No, you're going to have to take a knockout or knock him out. You know, it's what it is. Go to war. You know, go straight at him. Give him your best fucking shit while being defensively responsible. You know, that way you don't get uh, clipped with some dumb shit because you were just trying to go for some wild haymaker. No, you go in and really give him your best work. Um... Maybe then backpedal for a little bit and come in and hurry up and give him your best work again. But, you know, you got to give it to him. you got to go out on your shield. Um, you know, this is... People remember you for your, your last fights, man. We know Kodo's at the end of the road. Um, you know, the man, he fight okay. They, he could redeem himself here. He's still not the king of the middleweight division. He, like, even if he beats Canelo, but it would, it would kind of signify, like, in his heart, anyway, in his mind, you know, that he did become the man. You know, beating Martinez, whatever. If he retired then, he could have went out on that win. But he got too big of a money offer from Rock Nation, and he deserved that money, as I, me and someone else were talking about. But, you know, now he's going against Canelo. That ain't Martinez. That ain't fucking drained Gil. You're going to be going, Canelo's, you know, Came in against Angulo when 174. This dude's coming in as, you know, fucking Tony Zell, Jose Torres. He's coming in as a light heavyweight from the era of the same day weigh ins. He is going to be a light heavyweight of the era of the same day weigh ins um, versus Cotto. Um, you know, a blown up welterweight, really. Um, naturally, a natural, you know, middleweight. The guy would weigh in, uh, he'd be fighting at middleweight right now. So he's a natural middleweight, but he's going to be going in the ring against a, a, you know, a natural light heavyweight. Not a super middleweight, a light heavyweight. You know, that's a big fucking difference. Um, tough, tough, tough fight, man. Tough fight. I give Cotto all the credit in the world. I feel so bad for him that this just had to happen to him. Um, because, you know, even if it heals up and he's able to breathe fine, the day of the fight, one stiff one, <laughs> that shit's going to bent right again. I mean, come on. And they're going to be squeezing on it, fixing on it, 
uh, sticking the, the, the coagulants up in it, it's going to cause troubles. Now it's like, man, you know, all right, look, I was already hesitant about buying the fight because I was just talking about, you know, supporting um, good fights, unification fights, or just good good cards, 50-50 fights, or good cards that you like, support them, buy them, all that. I was totally going to buy this card. Um, then, you know, uh, we're hearing probably neither one of these guys is going to fight Triple G. Uh, and people bitch Triple G can't get a name, but who the fuck is going to fight him? That's the problem. All right, so the, he he signed on to fight Parag, uh, you know, but he injured, he got a, uh, his career in, uh, ended career ending injury leading up to the he was in camp to fight Golovkin. Like that would have been his best win to date um, if he would have beat Parag, 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 whatever. Um, which I don't know, that would have been a good one, man. I think he would have though, uh, but. You know, it's like, come on, man. You know, you can't really... It's like, why? It's like you... Just because... Okay, Rigo got Donaire, but that's it. So what if Donaire never gave him that shot? Um, you, you know, and Rigo had to just fight the guys he's fighting. Oh, he sucks because, you know, no one will fucking fight him. Are you kidding me? No, Donaire had... Or Rigo had Donaire. Triple G just ain't got nobody. You know, if, if Canelo wins, hopefully he steps up. You know, highly unlikely. Honestly, it's highly unlikely. And Golovkin just said today that I will not fight at 55, 56, 58. It's fucking 60. Because he knows, uh, you know, dude, you're fighting me at 60 or you're giving me your belt. Flat out. It's like bullying a kid for his fucking milk money. You know, it's like you go to school, you don't, you're poor, you ain't got no fucking food, uh, no lunch, and you know, you, 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 it ain't free lunch era. Um, you, give me your motherfucking money, or you know, you want extra chocolate milks or whatever. You know, give me your fucking dollar. You're getting free lunch today, buddy. I'm, you know, I'm getting six fucking chocolate milks. Either way, it's like give me your fucking money, or I'm beating your ass. No, I take the money. Same fucking thing here, man. Give me your fucking belt, or I'm beating your ass. Take the belt. Because don't dare say Canelo ain't a middleweight. The motherfucker is bigger than Triple G. Period. And it's proven. We can look at fight night weights. All right. Uh, Canelo has weighed heavier than Golovkin ever has. You want to do a career average? Canelo's, you know, a career average, you know, like since junior middleweight, when he started a junior middleweight and up, higher. Uh, you want to go on like a fight by fight basis of their last, say, five fights of all the the fights that we can get fight night weights. Canelo weighs more. All right, it's flat out. You know, he's a bigger, he's the bigger man on fight night, and he's weighing in at 154, 155. So you let him weigh in at 160. What do you think he's coming in at? This guy can come in at 174 pounds. While weighing in at 155. Alright. So you let him weigh. Come in at 160. He's going to weigh 178. You know. 179. Golovkin. 173. Heaviest he's ever weighed. Uh, maybe he'd come in at 73. Maybe he'd come in at 70 again. Which seems to be his. You know. Most consistent. Coming around 170. Uh, 169, 171, somewhere in that area. Um, so Canelo's the bigger man. He can't if he's the bigger man. There's no reason to say you're bigger than me. I need to bring you down. No, maybe dumbass motherfuckers out there who don't watch boxing all that regularly and just know the name Canelo and read the headline, they might think that's true. But the boxing world knows he is the bigger man. All right, so if he don't fight him, he's it's a duck, and it's a bitch-ass move. Why? Why? Because I just said it. All right, it's the same thing as saying I'm going to beat your ass or give me your money. And that's what Golovkin's telling Canelo. It's 160, and I'm going to fuck you up or give me your belt. And if Canelo dare wins and gives that belt up, dude, you know, I, I, I always... I, 
oh, any video I've ever brought Canelo up, I never said a thing bad about him. Maybe technique and things like that, but I never criticized it. I said, and I think he's getting better, though. But I always would say, but the guy is at least a real fighter. He's willing, he's willing to challenge himself. He's willing to fight the best, dare to be great, all that shit. Mm, you know, if he loses that with me, that's that's huge. That's huge. Uh, you know, so there's that aspect. Okay, the winner of this fight does. I thought we were in a middleweight tournament here first. I first, first of all, I thought this was like an unofficial middleweight tournament, right? But it turns out since Triple G fucking thrashed Lemieux right in front of fucking Oscar De La Hoya and Hopkins, they ran back to Canelo and said, no, 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 no. And if that's what they did, then Canelo needs to say that. Uh, because either way, the Golden Boy is looking bad here if they don't make the fight. Because what did they say? Unification fights. We're going to give the fans the fights they want. The best, the f best fights. And I, I believed them. I believed them. I fell for it. I'll admit it. I fucking fell for it. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm pissed off about it. Because, you know, basically they fucking fooled me. Now, if they're just using it as a ploy to be like, alright, we'll do 160, but we're getting like 75-25, then I'm fine with that. I don't give a fuck about the money. As long as that, that they fight at 160, I don't give a shit who gets what. Just fight at 160. Unify this damn this division up. Because, you know, if, and God, let's hope Andy Lee wins. I know some of you Saunders fans out there are really rooting for him, but I'm going to tell you why. I want him to lose. Andy Lee said he'll fight Golovkin instantly. If he wins, boom, we can get that fight. Um... If Saunders wins, he says he needs 18 months before he fights Golovkin. Why the fuck do you need a year and a half before you fight Golovkin? A year and a half? What, you want to get in fucking four fights before you fight Golovkin? Are you kidding me? And then you lose to someone, and then they take fucking four fights, and they're all over in the UK, no one will fight Golovkin? No, fuck that. Fuck that. 18 months, my ass. Uh, no, no. And, and I, I mean, and it's silly because it is the uh, the WBO. They probably mandate um, some kind of thing. They, you know, maybe. But who knows? Who knows, man? Um, who knows? The WBO usually does right, but we've been seeing some fucked up shit lately and over the past, you know, seven, six, seven months, I guess. So you never know. Uh, you just never know with them. So I want Lee to win, flat out. Um, and when it comes to Cotto and Canelo, I don't give a shit who wins because the fight is basically meaningless. So what I was getting to was, like, I wanted to buy the fight because I wanted to support it because it's the tournament. I'll support it. Um, but if, number one, they're not fighting. They are both middleweights. They're fighting for a middleweight strap and the linear championship, and they're not fighting at 160. So that's already bullshit. All right, but they handle that, whatever. They agreed to it, whatever. But now the the they're basically, you know, Freddie Roach and Cotto are hinting they might fight Golovkin. But we've already heard Cotto say, Cotto is on record saying he's never going to fight someone at 160. That they will always have to come down. He just said that before the Gill fight. If you want to go fucking find the interviews. But it's a, I promise you it's a fact. He said it. I saw him on camera fucking say it. Um, he said everyone is going to have to come down. Because he's not a middleweight. Said it before the Gill fight. So he ain't fighting Cotto at 160. Get that notion out of your head. Um, uh, Canelo. He ain't fighting. He ain't fighting him. He ain't fighting him. Flat out. He's not. Uh, Golden Boy either ain't going to let him, or he's just not going to want to. Um, remember after uh, uh, Willie Monroe, when Golovkin toyed with that dude? I mean, first of all, you call Willie Monroe like the biggest scrub Triple G haters do. But then say, oh, he was able to rip into Triple G. If he was able to rip into Triple G, he is not a scrub. Um, Triple G toyed with that dude like... It was a joke. 
Um, the fight was a complete mismatch, so he fucking gave the fans some rounds. I mean, if you don't believe that, that's up to you, I guess. But, you know, in my opinion, that's clearly what happened. Um, I mean, it was pretty fucking obvious. Uh, you know, I mean, just look, yeah, it, it was obvious. Um, so, you know, it's like, after that fight, <clears throat> after the Willie Monroe fight, Canelo threw out some tweets, right? Ooh, I see openings, I see weaknesses, I can get them, I can get them. He ain't saying much. <laughs> after the Lemieux fight, now it's all, oh, 155 or no fight, and blah, 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 blah. No. No, 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 no. I thought you saw weaknesses. I thought you could beat them. Oh, what happened to that? Where'd the confidence go? Where'd the confidence go? Did it, did it, you know, shoot out your ass right after you watched fucking Triple G uh, have an offensive massacre and, you know, unbelievable defense at the same time? Uh, you know, did, did that, like, make you fucking shit your pants and be like, that's fucking Floyd Mayweather, you know, 8.0? Um, you know, Floyd Mayweather that actually comes to take my head off and is going to outbox me. Yeah, I don't want none of that. None of that. And I said it at the fight. I said, dude, I said to whoever I was with at the time, I said, dude, uh, they were, you know, all oh, great performance. So I'm like, he fucked himself. <laughs> I called it. I said, dude, he just scared off any opponents. Like, he should not have done that. He should have tried to take Triple G out. Or he, Triple G should have tried to take Lemieux out as early as possible to not show that. You know, just make it look like Lemieux was a bum and he just, you know, ripped his head off real quick. Instead, he wanted to just, you know, and instead he just said, you know, I'm a box. I'm a box, break him down, beat him down, punish him, punish him, punish him. Like he said on the fucking uh, face off. That's what he did. He punished him, punished him. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, so, you know, you got all these reasons. It's like, why should I support this shit? Why should I put money in fucking Rock Nation's pocket if they're not going to fucking put on the good fight? Why should I put money in Golden Boy's pocket if they're not going to put on the good fight? Right? And, you know, the, the undercard ain't all that. Um, it's not all that bad, but it sure shit ain't all that. Uh, you know, I think you got Randy Caballero on there. Um, that's good. Uh, you got Miro. I mean, that's decent. You know, I'm a two, 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 champ, two world champions. Um, but at the same time, it's like, come on, come on, man. And, and if they're charging like 50 for this card too, though, I probably still will buy it. I mean, I'll probably still buy it anyway, but it, it, it just gives you reasons to not buy it, right? Because it's like, I want to support the good and I don't want to support the bullshit. And this card and the people involved in this card are pumping some bullshit at the moment. So, you know, if I don't support this card, maybe the numbers will do poor. <laughs> like, I can control, like, 300,000 people. But, you know, I would almost hope for this card to also feel the same fate of Golovkin, you know, from getting uh, Mayweather Pacquiao, terrible fucking fight. People paid 100 bucks. They never want to buy boxing pay-per-view ever again. Um, very few people bought Floyd and Berto. Um, I don't believe any of the numbers they've put out because none of them are the official. Um, you know, 400000 I don't even think it hit that. I think that's bullshit. I think someone paid whoever to uh, say that number. It's, uh, honest to God, I do. Um, because, you know, if it's 400000 and that's what everyone's saying, then why won't Showtime just release it and say, yeah, it's 400000 no, because it's not. Okay, because it's not. So what was it? 250? 300? Is it just as like Floyd's very first pay-per-view fight ever? So again, no one's buying fucking pay-per-view. You even have, uh, you know, Triple G, well-known, David Lemieux, so-so. And it did, it made a profit. I mean, it made millions of dollars, but it didn't make the the millions that they were hoping it would make. Now, you know, it gets, what, 150000 um, right over one fifty. It's like, man, you know. And that, that Floyd fight, that only did what it did because all the, you know, throughout the country, there's probably, you know, 
eight out of a thousand hardcore Floyd fans. Um, but the ones with the actual uh, either desire to buy that fight, um, financial uh, ability to buy that fight, um, maybe busy doing something else that night for whatever reasons. I, I, there was only a few hundred thousand that bought it. Um, and you know those were die-hard Floyd fans because no one else bought that fight. I don't know one boxing fan that bought that fight. In fact, I don't know one person in real life that bought that fight. And I, I'm like, most of my friends are Floyd fans. I try to tell them, but they just won't listen. But, um, you know, they, they, none of them bought the fight. Um, a couple of them didn't even know it was on. Uh, however, you know, Triple G, um, I think they could have did more promotion, like a, a better series, because we saw what that road to Golovkin Everyone said that shit should have been longer. Um, they should have made, you know, they should have did that at least. Um, or they should have did, you know, like two 24-7 episodes. That, that always increases the numbers. I mean, how much money is it to have a fucking camera crew and an editing dude at a computer chop it up real quick? It ain't costing much money, man. I mean, damn, you can get, yeah, that's cheap as shit. Uh, and it would have definitely created um, more buys. We have seen 24-7s and all accesses really uh, be the reason fights do so well. Um, so I, I can't understand why they didn't do that, but that's on them. But now at the same time, you know, right before that, they're saying, well, if Lemieux wins, there's no rematch with Triple G. We are fighting Canelo, because he's going to win, remember, it's Golden Boy, in April. But now, we sure as shit ain't hearing if Canelo's fighting Golovkin in April. Why not? You know, I thought you wanted to give the fans the best they want. So I, it's almost like, I don't want to give you my fucking money then, dude. You know what? I want to make your numbers suffer. That way you have to put on the fight. Because who are you going to go make Canelo fight? You're going to put him on HBO, regular ass HBO, and just get a little percentage of that? Or do you, are you willing to put him on the big pay-per-view? You know, it's like, you know, it is what it is, man. Or maybe do the numbers need to be really high? And does that create, like, okay, pay-per-view might be back. But I think pay-per-view is going to suffer for a long, long time. Um, I, I just do. I just do. At least for another year. Um, we're going to have to get, they're, they're really going to have to start stacking these cards like back in the day. Where, you know, you get a middleweight uh, title fight. You know, a lightweight unification fight. Um, you know, the, the, the man in the division versus the number one contender, um, shit like that. And then just like a rubber match between two guys who go to war like crazy, you know, like, oh, what the fuck? I can't even think of their names. Son always watches the fight over and over. I can't remember. Anyway, they're going to have to start giving us cards like that, man. Uh, cause this shit's out of control. No one wants to... To, to buy this, but I, I was talking to like Haplo and some other people, and most people feel this card is gonna do good numbers, uh, just because of their fan bases. You figure they probably each got 300,000 um, ride or dies that are gonna buy it, so that's 600,000. Throw a one or 200,000 casuals, I mean, you're looking at you know, six, six to eight hundred thousand. I mean, that sounds about right. Uh, that sounds about right. Um, and these are people who aren't affected by the Floyd Mayweather Pacquiao fight because they understand what that was. And they understand what Floyd and Barto was. So, you know, they'll support it. Um, I think a lot more people would uh, have bought Triple G, but a lot of them were streamed it just because they, they didn't like the guy. Honest to God, there's a good... 200,000 people out there, I would guarantee you that stream the fight. Um, guarantee it. Um, I'm sure more, I'm talking about 200,000 that would probably would have bought it, but out of their, they, they don't like the guy, out of that they didn't buy it. Which is crazy because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, they say they want action, they say they want unifications, they say they want, you know, guys fighting the best, and they're getting it, and then they, they don't support it. It's, it's fucking insane, but... Uh, you know, 
Uh, Canelo Cotto. The the nose though. I really just think Canelo became a huge favorite. Like like you know, uh, 65-35 type favorite. Um, it really sucks because this. I was starting to look at this fight more as a 50-50. Um, but I don't know how long, you know, I know Cotto would have better stamina than Canelo, but if his nose breaks again, which it should, like within the first three rounds, I don't know what he's going to be like in that ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th round. I, you know, I just don't, I just don't. He might be extremely gassed by then, but, you know, let me know what you guys think. Um... Do you think the nose is broke? First of all, and because I haven't really, I don't watch other people's videos all that much. I check a couple out here and there, but I haven't lately because I've been so busy. Are other people think that his nose is broke too? Because all I'm seeing in the articles is black eye, <coughs> which I think is bullshit. But um, you think his nose is broke? You think that's clearly going to affect him in the fight? Um, <clears throat> you know, all that stuff. Any anything I was talking about here. Uh, let me know what you think. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.